a woman I've only been with probably for three or four days in my life. But she has a glow about her and a wake of love behind her. And I won't say anything more than Nelly Galan. Roll the video. I came to this country when I was four years old with my family. Nellie Galan is a self-made media mogul. I'm a kid of immigrants, and I figured my parents did not bring me all this way for me not to do something big. She started out as the youngest guest editor of Seventeen magazine, which led her to reporting for network television. At 22, she became the country's youngest television station manager. Galan founded her own company, Galan Entertainment, in 1994, which helped launch over 10 television channels abroad and produced over 700 television shows in English and Spanish, including the hit reality series The Swan for Fox Network, which was famously spoofed on Saturday Night Live. Galan became the first Latina president of a U.S. network, Telemundo. She then was a celebrity apprentice. Television executive and Latina media tycoon, Nelly Galan. What's the Spanish word for expert? Empresario. I love that word. I love that word. Who likes empresario? Raise your hand. I think Nelly has tremendous ability. She was like the star of the team. Most people are losers. You're a winner. Why should I keep you? Because I'm exceptional. With all due respect, not one of my team members has brought me into the boardroom before. And I don't know why you haven't gotten over that. Nelly's a leader. I live in the world of Latinos, in the world of successful women. And somebody has to do it. Galan has since started the Adelante movement to unite and empower Latinas economically and entrepreneurially. I decided I'm going to start a movement for Latinas. And it's called the Adelante movement, because Adelante means move it, move forward. The media and the U.S. government took notice. Here with us now, Emmy Award-winning producer Nelly Galan. I wanted to say, if you're not looking for Latinas in your corporation, you're missing the boat. Our goal is to train as many Latinas as we can. Well, you could see her excitement. I'm excited. Adelante. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me a new word, Adelante. My charity is for women entrepreneurs. You are so positive. I, just I love, love your slogan. Around. You know what her slogan is? Don't buy shoes, buy buildings. And now, Nelly has a New York Times best-selling book and a movement called Self-Made for all women. There is no true empowerment until you are financially self-reliant. And it's not a grandiose feat, it's for all women. We can all do it from our house. Every company has to look at this new reality that women are the sleeping giants in America. We have incredible power, and there are more entrepreneurial opportunities for us than there are jobs. You are my mission in life, women like you. Oh my God, I love that you say that. Your power is not given, it's taken, and it's there for us. Think bigger. Coming self-made is the new ticking clock for women. It's not if, but when. Nelly has done it all. She is a inspiring entrepreneur. I am self-made. Let me show you how. Now, here, go. Adelante. tell you Donald Trump stories. I lived in Trump Tower for seven weeks, sequestered. <laughs> I need that same more. So I, I, I'm so happy that I got to hear Dawn. Thank you, Dawn, where are you? So great, because I believe in entrepreneurship and in empowering women and, and multicultural women, as you can see. And I loved hearing Howard speaking about speed. I'm gonna talk to you about something else. I think self-made for me is not just about being an entrepreneur, it's a mindset. Whether you work for other people, you know, I've spent five years traveling the country training multicultural women in entrepreneurship. 
Some of us work for other people, but it's about thinking a new way that is demanded. It de we're demanded to think entrepreneurially going forward in this world. And you know, I think there's another way to get there. And for me, I have to tell you, as an immigrant, I want you to hear how most of us get there. It's from pain. And I think pain is not something to run away from, but to go into. Because from meeting so many entrepreneurs, I mean, I've worked with seven billionaires, uh, and, and women starting out that just arrived that don't even speak English. It doesn't matter. The ones that really do transcendent work go into their pain and realize that their pain is showing them where they are an expert and what they can build a business from. For me, it started in the seventh grade. I came to this country from communist Cuba. I was a political refugee, and my parents had nothing and were, like so many immigrants, afraid and very quiet and always, let's stay under the radar, very, very scared about everything. I had to turn fear and failure into my best friends because I had parents that were afraid about everything. And so I realized that fear and failure were my guiding light. And in the seventh grade, my parents had sent me to all-girl Catholic school, very Latino. I was like the, the one kid in the family that they thought were going to invest, which, you know, a lot of immigrants do that. You know, they say, you're a plumber. It's good to be a plumber and go be the best plumber. You're the, the kid that's going to take care of all of us, so we're going to raise the money and send you to school. But in the seventh grade, my parents were running out of money. And I would overhear them at night, and, and my, father, my mother would say, ¿Qué vamos a hacer? What are we going to do? And my father would go, don't worry, Jesus will help us. <laughs> and I thought, I better hurry up and be Jesus because this is not good. the nuns are going to kick me out. <laughs> and so there was a lady down the street from me that sold Avon. And she had said to me, honey, why don't you sell some Avon and I'll give you some free lipstick. And I go, I got to go cut a better deal with this lady. And I went to her and I said, look, I'll sell Avon, but we got to change the deal. It's got to be 50-50. I'd seen that on a TV show. And the first week I sold Avon, I made 200 bucks because immigrants are great salespeople. And after a month, I had made $800 and I started paying down my tuition. But then I was worried about my dad. Latino man could not pay for the school. For, you know, I couldn't do that to my dad. So I said to the nuns, you got to send a letter home, say that I got a scholarship, something. And I took that letter back and my mother goes, ¿Qué dice la carta? What does it say? And my father goes, Oh my God, your daughter is a genius and Jesus helped us after all. <laughs> but I want you to know that that pain of being the kid of immigrants created my entire career. I was employee number one of the first Latino TV station in the United States that then became a network, that then I became an expert in Latinos and in the pain of Latinos. I've made 700 shows about the pain of Latinos and became Latina Tyler Perry. <laughs> so I tell you all that having gone everywhere and met, meeting so many people, sometimes it's not just speed, it's pain and being an expert and being grounded in something big, larger than yourself. A number of years ago after I had made money, because I don't think money, I, I mean, I know everyone in this room knows, if you focus your energy whether it's through speed, through innovation, through pain, you're gonna get there and you're gonna make money, but then what? And so I am here because a number of years ago I took a sabbatical. Instead of going to business school, I had not finished school. My eight-year-old son said to me at the time, Mom, why do I have to go to college? You didn't finish college and you've done really well. And I go, oh, no, no, hell to the no. And I went back to school. And I took four years off. I took a sabbatical from my, my business, which was very hard for me to do because I'm an immigrant and I think it's never enough. And I went to psychology school instead. And I studied Jungian psychology in, in uh, Santa Barbara. And I got a master's and doctorate in clinical psychology. So I'm here as your personal therapist today to tell you what I think we all have to think about internally and how to really be self-made because self-made is DIYing yourself from the inside out. It's great that we run really efficient, great businesses and we go for it and we're on top of it. But guess what? I've worked with a lot of people that are multi, multi billionaires and they're miserable. And you know what they're worried about? Time is running out. And so they went so fast that then so many things fell through the cracks. So I want to ask you and I want us to take some moments and slow down 
and think about, we all want to grow our businesses. Who doesn't want to grow their businesses? But I just want to say that to grow, ooh, hold on, what happened? Sorry. That to grow your business, we need to grow first. We need to go inward. We need to say, is this money enough? Do I get to give myself time to do something different, to think different, to grow? Do I get to, you know, do I get to get mentors for me? I mentor the whole world. Who mentors me? Can I admit that I need help? What do I do for me? And how do I build a company that I'm proud of, that I'm truly proud of, and that will live beyond me, or what I've done will live beyond me? And I think it starts with looking at our team. I think, you know, to me, my goal always is to think about myself first, because if I'm not happy, it's like they say, happy wife, happy family, well, happy CEO, happy company, and happy customers. So I always think about my team and my customers. And so I want you to think, because I've now gone to every Fortune 500 in America to speak. And what do I see? They're always telling me, how can we get, we need to grow, we need to grow. And I go, well, I, I hate to say this, but when I go into your retail stores or when I go into this, the company doesn't look like your customer. The number one customer in America are multicultural women, period. The die has been cast, they've already been born, whether you like it or not, that's the story. If your company doesn't look like those women, you're screwed. Your company's not gonna make it. You're not getting the right intel. You're not, you don't know what your customers want. You know, I've been to banks where they tell me it's something similar to what Howard was saying, that their companies are going, you know, low touch. And I go, well, that's great, but you have a lot of multicultural people and a lot of immigrants that need high touch. So how are you gonna deal with that? So I want you all to think about, does your team reflect the world? Does your team support you by having diverse skills. Diversity is not just culture, ethnicity, religion, it's skill diversity. I walk into so many companies where the CEO chooses a lot of people like themselves. In skills, in the way they look, in the way they speak, in the way they don't talk back to them. So really, is that happy for you? To have to be everything to everybody? And I've been there. It, does that really make you happy? Because you don't have time to even breathe, to be, to live. I think it's important to say that most CEOs that I meet that become successful are incongruent. They say one thing, they say they believe in one thing, they really want to be something, but the way they act in their business is not congruent. So I want you to think, if you've built this incredible business, you've been really fast, you've done everything right, it's working, you want to keep doing that, and it doesn't feel or sound in your soul like you, you will be miserable. It's better to walk away and start all over and become congruent, because you're not going to get to old age and be a happy person, I can tell you. I can, I can privately tell you one after the other billionaire I've worked with that are at the end of their life in a very bad place because they're alone, because they forgot what got them there. And that's why I say, let's go back to your pain. What is it that got you to wanna be an entrepreneur or work for an entrepreneur or be the CEO of a company? What, what pushed that thing? And now you got there and now you're somebody you don't even recognize and no one else does either. I think it's very important to say that the messaging of your company. You have to really think about it. How many companies have I seen since Donald Trump became president checking the box? Oh, I got a free pass now. I don't have to really like align with anybody. I don't have to align with multiculturals. I don't have to do anything. Wrong. This is a moment to, to really be congruent and really speak up and not just do marketing that checks the box. We have to speak, we have to be about something. You know what, if your company is fast and does everything right and is, is perfect, but in the end you make one mistake, you're not gonna have loyalty because nobody knows what the hell you're about. But if you are someone that stands for something, if your company stands for something, if you are congruent with what your company stands for, 
then when you make a mistake, you can ask for forgiveness because people will be there with you. So I want you to think about that. How do you create growth and ROI for your company and still do the right thing? But the right thing for you, I may not agree with your right thing. What is right and authentic for you and your business? At least you're walking through the world about something. Pivoting, how many companies, we say that word so easily, but in truth, companies have a hard time admitting they're wrong because CEOs have a hard time admitting they're wrong. That's the truth, that you just don't know what the hell you're doing. And when you're younger and when you're going up the ladder, you know, that, that, the pain of that, of not knowing, oh my God, I don't know. I gotta go, I gotta go to 100 you know, events. I've gotta find somebody. I got... You seek out help and we stop. We stop growing. We stop admitting we don't know what the hell we're doing. You know, what is wrong about hiring tutors? You know what? My son said to me, I, I hire all these tutors for him. And he's like, Mom, Kobe Bryant has eight coaches. And, you know, that's how he justifies my tutoring. And I go, well, why don't I have eight coaches? Am I, why am I not Kobe freaking Bryant? And why are all of you not? Why have we forgotten that? I think it is important to say, we have to be louder, braver. We have to stand for something. What the hell are we waiting for? To drop down and be six feet under? Time is, time is ticking. Time, those of us that are older know, those tw the 20 year olds, you know, you, you still think there's time. The rest of us know, it goes like this. It goes like this. Are we waiting to, be, to do something that we can be proud of ourselves, because it doesn't matter how many trophies you get, how many people invite you and give you awards. It's the award inside your body that only you know that you've done good, that you finally stood up for what you believe in. And if you don't do it, your whole entire company can't do it either. It's important to redefine success. I think, you know, listen, I, like, anyway, I've had three businesses. They've been very successful. I still have that hunger in me. But guess what? I have a, a little bit more balance because I'm blessed that I've worked with seven billionaires that have been miserable. They have all the money in the world. At a certain point, you, you, you do have to give away all the money. You don't need that much money. So what do you need? You need time and you need significance. <coughs> and the people around you that you have just let fall through the cracks. So I want us all to think, how do you get to the end of your life? Place yourself at the end of your life, whatever number that is for you. And look at people that age that you admire. And maybe you only admire one part of them. Maybe you have to compartmentalize 10 people to create the person you want to be and reverse engineer. We're good at this. We know how to reverse engineer our business. Why can't we reverse engineer ourselves? And why do we do all this? Why is all this important? Because becoming self-made is not, I didn't just go become an entrepreneur, I'm self-made, I even say that, I am self-made. But the truth is, it's a lifetime journey of mastery to DIY yourself from the inside out every day, one step at a time, to tell yourself, am I doing good this year? To say to yourself, I'm going to accomplish one thing this year, not a hundred. We can't even process all the stuff that's being thrown at us. Slow down, take one thing at a time, and complete something that makes you better. I think the reason for all of it is that the only way to lead is by example. You know, every time I forget, I have to read my own book, I read it again, and I go, you know what? The only thing my son, every time, you know, you see your kids and you go, oh, really? How? They didn't learn a damn thing from us. But in fact, they do, and they do copy your behavior. And they do watch you, even if you don't know it. And they watch your bad habits as well. So your kids, your employees, your company, the way you project yourself in the world, you are leading by example in order to pass the torch. We have to remember, CEOs and entrepreneurs, we're not doing, we're going to die. We have to pass the torch. We have to create mini-me's. We have to let them do it. We have to let them be better than us. We have to surround ourselves with these kids that are better than us. 
So I say to all of you, adelante, because that's my word. Move our butts and do it. Go to the next level in your life. Change yourself to change your business. Thank you. Nelly, uh, one second. Nelly, one second. Don't, don't leave the stage so fast. Um, I have a question. Oh, okay. In education and oh. leadership and mentorship and all of these things which you alluded, a question comes up again and again. What is my purpose? Mm -hmm. So it's nice to tell me to find your passion, but I don't know what my passion is. Mm -hmm. Or it's nice to find the purpose, but is it to save the whales or build the company? Or I don't know. Mm -mm. Uh, well, what I, advice do you give to people to find that? Oh, I think it's very easy. I said it, but I'll say it again in a different way. It's in your pain. I believe that, you know, you might say, well, I have no pain. Oh, I can find your pain, Rob, I promise you. <laughs> Everybody has pain. My, my wife's in the audience, uh, so. <laughs> I mean, my, you know, my husband's like a white guy from Pasadena, and he says, what's my pain? And I go, honey, you got more pain than I do. I got news for you. So the thing is, I believe things happen to us, and there are things that happen to us, whatever they are. It could be we had a parent that was an alcoholic. We had, you know, whatever it is, okay? There is a reason that you were given that path. What, do, you, do you just think, oh my God, poor me, that happened to me. Let me move on. Let me work my way out of it to become richer so I don't even think about it. No. Why did that happen to you? And how do you find a customer from that place? Or how do you find a business from that place? What were you missing in that place? It's kind of like Lean Startup 101. It's find a problem, but I say it differently. Find a pain. Find something that hurts you that wasn't resolved for you. How can you resolve it for others? Or really connect with that customer base that no one's looking at from that place. I think that's the starting point. Lovely. And I think a lot of people don't want to go there. But that's how, you know, five years on the road with multicultural women, you cannot believe the businesses they've started from their pain. So that's where I would begin. Great. Thank you again. Thank you. Nellie has taken a page and translated it for us, or perhaps many pages, from the Hindu and Buddhist tradition of karma. Karma, of course, giving you indications of what is meaningful for you and how you overcome it. By the way, I love the slide, Nellie, about working backwards from, where you, from your, the end of life, and I noticed you started at the 20s. What I would like to do is work backwards from 48 to 20 and get that started again and see what happens. Be about something. It's the award inside your body. And by the way, you can feel that. And there is research now that tells us about our nervous system in our digestive system. That's why we call it the gut. That's why you have that horrible feeling when you're doing that thing you know you shouldn't be doing, but no one's watching, so it must be okay. <laughs> That's also why you have that feeling when the chips are down and times are tough, and you don't know if you're on the right path, but you feel that despite the challenge, you will stand and rise and do your best, whether you succeed or not. It is the right thing. It is the award inside your body. It's not just speed, but pain, to get inside your pain. And I have to say, I've never heard someone say, that is the place to find your mission and purpose. You'll note that when Anya Dagan earlier this morning gave her comments, she mentioned someone she had just met this morning as having a significant impact on her life. And that is for us, ladies and gentlemen, Nellie Galan. 